J. M. Coetzee's book Disgrace was released in 1999. Four years later, the author won the Nobel Prize in Literature. Middle-aged professor David Lurie resides in Cape Town, South Africa, used to teach classics and modern languages, but is now an adjunct professor of communications, with little interest in the subject matter. He's permitted to teach one subject of his choice, so he teaches romantic poetry, but it doesn't satisfy him. However, he visits Soraya, a prostitute, every Thursday night for pleasure. After two marriages, he enjoys Soraya's simple one-night companionship. After he unintentionally runs into her and her two sons in public, their transactional relationship takes a bizarre turn. She informs him that she will be leaving the brothel the next time he comes by so that she can take care of her sick mother. When he contacts her a few weeks later after finding her phone number, she screams at him for hassling her and demands that he never talk to her again. At about this time, David is strolling on campus when he sees Melanie Isaacs, a stunning 20-year-old romantic poetry student, and he invites her to his flat for wine and supper, but the girl is uneasy the whole evening. David attempts to make her comfortable and begs her to spend the night, even though she wants to go. He responds that beautiful women have a responsibility to share their beauty with others in answer to her question about why she should do this, but this argument is fruitless and she soon departs. Several days later, though, he takes her to lunch, drives her to his apartment, and has intercourse with her on his living room floor while observing that she passively lays under him. Melanie withdraws from David and Mrs. Class while their romance continues. However, he marks her as being present due to their relationship. He attends one of her theatrical practices and unexpectedly shows up at her apartment, throwing himself on her, holding her in his arms, and advancing toward the bedroom even though she urges him to stop since her roommate would be returning soon. When he pulls off her jeans in the bedroom, she lifts her hips. However, this does not imply that she is any more receptive than she was the first time they had intercourse, it's not rape, not exactly that, but undesired nevertheless. The next day, she skips class and the midterm test, yet David awards her a 70%. Melanie arrives at David's flat the next weekend and requests to stay. He makes her a bed in his daughter's former room and lets her sleep since she appears distressed. He asks what's wrong the following morning and she replies she needs to remain with him, to which he agrees whilst knowing better. They have one final hookup the following day. That afternoon, Ryan, a young man, warns David to keep away from Melanie at his workplace, and his car gets damaged that evening. After this, Melanie stops visiting David's apartment but comes to class one day with Ryan who sits alongside her and challenges David while he teaches. After class, he informs Melanie she must take the midterm on Monday, but on Monday, he discovers a message in his faculty inbox stating Melanie has withdrawn from his class. Since Melanie has always respected him, her father contacts David to persuade her to continue in school. However, Mr. Isaacs quickly learns the truth at which time Melanie reports sexual harassment. David's disciplinary committee hearing allows him to present his side, but he pleads guilty to Melanie's allegations. The committee members, however, find his manner aggressive and haughty since he hasn't even looked at the accusations, and they eventually urge him to deliver a statement of sincere sorrow, which he refuses to do. He is thus compelled to leave the school. After resigning, David visits his daughter Lucy on a farm in the Eastern Cape. Lucy has been farming with Helen for many years, but Helen left, leaving her alone save for Petrus, who works for her and is set to become an owner of the property he lives on. Lucy tells David he may stay as long as he'd like and encourages him to see her hospitality as refuge since she has only heard a bit about his problems in Cape Town and doesn't want to prod him for further information. 
He wants to write an opera on Lord Byron, but has problems starting. He sometimes assists Petrus at Lucy's dog kennel to pass the time. He meets Lucy's friends, Bev and Bill Shaw, at a farmer's market and thinks them plain and unappealing. But out of boredom, he chooses to work as a volunteer at the Animal Welfare League, where Bev Shaw tends to wounded animals and, more often than not, puts them to death. One evening while out, David and Lucy come across three unfamiliar males. When they return to the farm, these frightening strangers say they need the phone because one of their sisters is delivering birth. David notices something is wrong shortly after Lucy grudgingly lets two of them inside, but he is helpless since the strangers have locked Lucy, and themselves, in the home. They beat him over the head when he tries to break in, pull him to the toilet, and lock him inside. He yells Lucy's name and feels powerless since no matter how hard he tries, he can't open the door. Through the glass, he sees the guys approach the outside kennel with Lucy's weapon in hand and fire the dogs inside, killing all except for Katie, a little bulldog. The guys douse him in flammable liquid after what seems like a long period, then drop a match on him. He runs back into the bathroom and douses the fire with toilet water, which prompts the assailants to lock him inside once again. Suddenly, he feels and sees flames flare up from his body. The three guys load David's vehicle with appliances and drive away. Following the assault, Lucy lets David go. Though it's evident the guys assaulted her, she refuses to speak about it. She tells him she'll go to her neighbor Ettinger's home and to keep to his own story about what transpired. She departs and returns with Ettinger in his vehicle, and Ettinger takes David to the hospital for burn treatment. David finds Bill Shaw, not Lucy, waiting for him hours later. He is stunned to hear Bill ask, what else are friends for? David is troubled by Petra's absence during the assault in the following weeks, and discovers he was conveniently out of town. David becomes concerned when he doesn't provide any information when he returns. During this time, Petrus throws a party to mark the occasion of taking over a portion of Lucy's property. David and Lucy encounter Pollux, one of the three assailants, during this party. Petrus stands between them and dissuades David from taking action as he moves on him and indicates that he will contact the police. Later, Inside the home, Lucy instructs her father not to contact the police. He attempts to speak to her about what occurred, but she won't have it. David returns to Cape Town because he believes he and Lucy have been together for too long, but not before stopping at Melanie's hometown to see Mr. Isaacs at work. Isaacs is shocked to see David but is willing to speak to him and extends an invitation to supper that evening. Melanie's mother and sister are uptight the whole evening, but Mr. Isaacs is polite to David. However, once his wife and daughter leave the room, Isaacs attempts to comprehend David's presence and eventually counsels him to reconcile his actions with God. David runs into the rear of the home, where he discovers Melanie's mother and sister seated on a bed, and kneels in front of them lowering his head in an act of contrition out of frustration at this sudden moral assault. David returns to Cape Town and finds that someone has broken into his flat. He attempts to concentrate on his opera project while restless, but he ultimately chooses to go back to Lucy's home after Bev's information over the phone that something has occurred. Upon his arrival, Lucy informs him that she is expecting a child and that the child would undoubtedly belong to one of her rapists. She also chose against getting an abortion since she has previously had one in the past and does not want to go through the experience again. David, who believes his daughter is making the wrong decision but is aware that he has no control over the situation, is unaware of all of this. And to make matters worse, Lucy informs him that Pollux, who she thinks has some cognitive issues, has moved in with Petrus. She still, though, 
is adamant about staying. David is outraged by this, and a few days later, when he witnesses Pollux watching Lucy through a window, he loses all control of himself. Knowing immediately that Pollux is keeping an eye on her dress, he stands by and watches as Katie beats the young guy as he kicks him and yells horrible things at him, calling him a swine in the process. When Lucy hears the disturbance, she rushes outside to help Pollux, but as she does so, her top falls down, revealing her upper chest. Pollux leaps up and goes away while yelling that he will murder them as soon as she turns her back to repair this. Lucy says she wants David to go because of this epidemic. When David realizes he has only made matters worse for his daughter, he decides to move into a hotel and accepts Bev Shaw's offer to work at the animal shelter while he waits for Lucy to give birth. He devotes so much time to the Animal Welfare League that he develops a fondness for one particular dog, whom he chooses not to euthanize every week. But after a while, he realizes that he's only delaying the inevitable, so he takes the innocent animal to Bev and declares, I am giving him up. If you have any suggestion of which book I should summarize, please let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.